بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب زدني علما so next there is one more way you can access the asa remotely via gui so in our previous sections we talked about the telnet or the ssh now these two are the cli based remote access where we can access the device remotely from the cli telnet again it's a clear text uh, probably the ssh is going to be encrypted sessions but again most of the time when you get into the advanced configurations we may want to access the asa via gui interface the graphical interface so here if you want to access your asa remotely based on the graphical user interface we have a application called web based gui application called asdm so asdm stands for adaptive security device manager that's what it actually stands for and it is a web based gui tool which you need to install on your local computer or any of your device and using that you can manage your asa devices remotely now the good thing about this is as it is a gui it makes a little bit easier for you to configure most of the things where you don't need to memorize each and every command of course we have uh, options where we can monitor the devices as well as we have a specific tools which can be used for troubleshooting your firewall appliances that is your cisco asa firewall so in inside this gui we will be having uh, some kind of set of wizards so most of the configurations you don't need to memorize the steps you will have a step by step wizard which will guide you with the complete configuration and the management of your firewalls and also they do uh, support some additional options like log viewer or there will be some monitor dashboards which you can use even there are some uh, additional troubleshooting features you can use like a packet trace or a packet capture tools which will be used for some kind of advanced troubleshooting scenarios so here uh, probably in this section we'll try to see how you can set up the asdm because you cannot directly use the as uh, gui without doing the basic setup configurations so we'll try to set up the asdm and will means you need to do some basic configurations as we progress you need to copy the image of course you need to do some additional configurations on the command line for making this to work so basically there must be an ip address and you need to copy the asdm image uh, roughly the steps are like asdm image it has to be copied into the flash of your cisco asa and then you need to enable the http services so http service because we will be accessing through http browser so we need to make sure that we have a username and the password created and we also enable the http uh, http access just like we have enabled the telnet or the ssh access so there is a step a step by step configuration so we'll be setting up those things in our virtual environment either in gns3 or evng and we can verify so in the production networks if you're using a physical asa then probably the steps remains the same now this is our default topology what i'll be using now if you want to manage by a gui i can connect one interface to management interface and then i can connect to a pc from where i can uh, log into the gui that is one option or you can use your inside interface also so basically i can use this inside interface for management as well as for my lan traffic so just to minimize so there are two options either you can use this way or that way so it's up to you so this is my asa cli from where i should be able to log in and verify some of the default things so if you verify show interface ip brief we do have the interfaces here so i can use this management interface to connect to my pc so what i'll do is i'll quickly go and connect to a pc here now again uh, one more thing you need to do is if you want to connect to the pc now what i can do is uh in in my gns3 i can use a specific cloud here so just to drag and drop the cloud so if you try to see in my local 
uh, in my in the in the videos of the JNS3, where they have shown how to connect your local computer to this one. The same thing I'm trying to do here. You can just go ahead and configure this. And as per my uh, topology here, I can I can just go to my network settings and do something here. So in my case, I need to go back to the network settings. So I can go back to my network settings. So whenever you install the VMware here, if you go to the adapter properties, if you already have the VMware installed, then there will be some logical interfaces it's going to create. That's something it will create automatically. So I can use any one of this interface to logically connect a PC, my local PC to the topology. And that's what I was trying to do. If you, if I go back and check the details here, this is the IP. Uh, it's a dynamic IP it's using. So I'm going to use this one. You can say just a name like the host one, let's say. And then I can go ahead and assign some IP address, whatever the IP you want, you can use it. I'll do this a little bit later. Or let me do it right now. So I'm going to use the IP, let's say 192.168. 168 1.5 and the gateway address let's say 1.10 which will be the and anyway i don't need gateways here but just let's say this is the ip now what i'll do is um, i can go ahead and configure this interface here and it will show you all the adapters now here i can select the actual interface what i want so make sure that you remove them and select the vmnet interface or whatever the interface we have decided to use. Click on this, show special adapters and try to remove these interfaces from here. And then add that, which means this logically, this cloud represents your NIC on my PC. So that can be any physical or generally we use a logical interface. When you install the VMware, it will automatically create some logical interfaces, which is something you can use, or even you can use a Microsoft loopback adapter. So if you just search on the internet, how to create a loopback adapter. Now loopback adapter is again, the logical interface, which can be used for connecting just like a logical interface or logical NIC card. You can also use that if you don't want to install the VMware. But generally, when we install the VMware or EVNG, uh, means when we install the EVNG or GNS3, you require VMware as well. So I can use this. So now I can go ahead and connect this to my management interface, uh, which logically represents that there is a connection from here. Okay, so now what I can do is I can go back to my uh, this one so the problem is again i need to add the new cloud because i have changed the interface ip so let me drag and drop a new cloud here because i have drag and drop the cloud which doesn't show the old interface now here you can see it shows up the interface here add that one and that's the reason you get that error message connecting to the management interface now this is more like as if you are connecting a cross cable between your computer. So this is more like you're connecting your PC across cable connects to the ASA and that ASA you're connecting a management interface. And here I'm using my physical NIC card. So it's more like that. And now what I can do is I can simply go to my ASA CLI and I can go to my management interface and I can assign the IP address name if let's say NGMT I'm using. And then security level, we are giving 100 and the IP address, whatever you want. I'm using 192 subnet. Let's assume this is my management network, what I'm using. No shutdown command to make the interface up. Now there are basic CLI configurations you have to do. And once I do this, if I go back to my CLI, CMD, now this is not the actual CMD what I'm using because I got two pieces. I'm using my JNS3 on my remote server. So I just wanted to confirm that those things. Now this is 
Yeah, this is my remote server. And here you can see this is a LAN interface IP, the, inter the interface which connects to the internet. And this is the actual IP what I have configured the host one adapter. So which means if I try to reach my management interface IP, I must be getting a reply. So which automatically confirms that you your host is connecting to the ASA. Now the same thing you do uh, if you want to connect a host to any of the device to run any applications, you can do the same way. In my case, I'm going to run the ASDM application on the local machine, and then I'm going to access my ASA remotely. So if you're doing the similar thing in EVNG, it will be different. That's something I'll show up a little bit later. But as of now, this is something you, you need to make sure. Now make sure that we do have our connections here. We did this and make sure that you have configured the IP address on the interface. So in my topology, I'm using the management interface with a different subnet, uh, but make sure that you are using the security level of 100 as well, uh, recommended. And the next step is we need to make sure that inside the ASA, we must have the ASDM file. Now, again, if you're using a physical ASA, probably if you're purchasing the ASA, normally the physical ASA, you might have this ASA image pre-copied or pre-installed in your in your flash, that's something you need to check. And in case if it is running any specific uh, any specific ASA version, uh, make sure that you're running the compatible ASDM version for that as well. Now, again, you need to uh, make sure that your ASA must have that. So if I go back to my ASA, if I say show version, when you say show version, Normally here you will see what is the what is the ASA version you are running. If we check this one, this is your ASA software. And also you can see the compatible device manager, the security device manager it supports. So which means if you want to run, if you want to run on this 9.6 version, then you must be running the ASDM version 7.6, which is compatible with this one. So make sure that that's how you can check the compatibility. You can even go and check on the Cisco websites, but normally this is the best way you can go with. Even if you go and search for ASDM and the ASA version compatibility, normally you will find a lengthy table which shows you the different versions. But generally we don't need to worry about all, just we need to know what version I'm using. So the show version is the best option I suggest. And likewise, if I say show DIR, uh, just DIR, that's something you can use. Or even if you say show flash, so I should see inside my flash, I must see the ASDM file. So whatever the ASDM file, it starts with ASDM dot uh, version and then dot file. That must be present inside my flash. If it is not present, then basically you have to copy. And that's what we'll be doing up here. We need to make sure that we use some kind of a TFTP software, which I'll be using. So on my PC, I'm going to run a TFTP application. So probably here I'm using Cisco TFTP software and make sure that you open this. Now this is same like you're taking the backup restore in the iOS. So I need to make sure that I'm going to copy this in my local machine from the PC. I'm going to copy it to the flash to my ASA which is 192.168.1.10. So of course, when you give copy TFTP flash, it's going to ask me the IP address and the file name, those kind of parameters. And we need to make sure that these things are ready. Now, two things I need to check. One is either I, I must have the ASDM file. Let me open that. And also I'll make sure that the TFTP is installed. If it is not installed, what I'll do is I'll quickly uh, try to install those things. Now here, I don't have the Cisco TFTP, so probably I'm going to install that. You can use any other TFTP software. You can, whatever the software you want, you can use. This is more like a simple software you need to install. That's one thing. And once we do this, we, we must able to get that one. So I should be able to open up this Cisco TFTP on my desktop. Now there's one more thing you need to do, you need to, make sure that you have that image in your local machine. So that's something I'll also check. Now, the first thing I need to locate the 
ASA image, ASDM image, it's already in my drive. This is the location and this is the actual file which I'm going to use. So we need to make sure that we are going to set that particular folder. So we need to go to options. If you're using Cisco TFTP, this is how you do. Uh, make sure that whatever the directory, because whenever I say copy, it is going to locate or search this particular folder. So either you copy that particular file into this folder, that is one option, or you just change this location, which is something I prefer. Uh, simply, you just change this as per your requirement. Now I'm saying whenever I, I, I want to search for the ASDM file, I want you to search for this location where this is an actual file name. Okay, so I'll copy this file name as well, .bin file, so that at the time of copying, I'm going to uh, do that. So I'm going to simply use this option. So let's go back to the CLI of my, this one. And one more thing we need to keep in mind, the reachability, when you are doing the testing, uh, make sure that the TFTP connection is established on this interface. Now this interface is important because here it shows the TFTP connection is established on 192.168.140.1, uh, which is not the same subnet what we are using. So try closing the applications. Now, this is one more thing you need to uh, check. If you're using physical interfaces, then these problems will not be there because normally it uses the default physical interface, but this it has to change. So it has to be the interface which you are using for copying. Now here you can see once I, now, now make sure that it's using this interface. Now what I did is I just went to this, it was using this virtual interface, I disabled that. So which means automatically it is using this interface. Now this is important, the TFTP server must be running on the same interface. In some, uh, in some versions, like if you're using other version like uh, TFTP D64, there, there will be an option to select the interface as well in some other versions, but here in this one, it, it's not like that. 